Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all for being here. I wanted today to have this session and this class be about hope. There are so many of us around the planet right now that are in fears, that are in despair, that are in distressed. There's so, every time you listen to the news, there is another mass shooting, there's another catastrophic events. There's another video, distressing video about a natural disaster. There's so many things that are happening that seems to be agitating and even distressful that you would have to hide yourself under a rock and disconnect completely to any kind of uh, um, uh, media to isolate yourself from the onslaught of all of this uh, incoming flow of uh, what would appear as negative experiences. And uh, I wanna, I wanna this, this, this session, the focus of the session to be healing. And I'm gonna explain what I mean. A lot of the natural disaster things that all happen around the planet are actually connected to um, global warming and the transformation that is taking place is beyond our ability to um, alter, to change, or to um, shift in any way. However, this is not to say that giving everything else that's going on, there is not a way for us to be in tuned with the change and the transformation because a lot of these uh, catastrophic events that are taking place or a demolition for a reconstruction. And um, I was talking earlier the, this morning to my other class, my advanced class about how to connect to the elemental uh, forces, particularly the Earth Elohims and the Master Devas. And I can tell you that there is a process and we do a group connection together. Let's say there's a volcano that's about to erupt or there is a hurricane that's about to cause all kinds of catastrophic things. There is a group call that we make and there's a very specific way in which we connect together to allow, and we have to become neutral to whatever that event is. Let's say, for example, we did a connection for Shenzhen that was happening in Japan on that typhoon. And what you do is that you, you first have to treat that elemental experience, that transformative experience that's happening called a typhoon, you have to realize it's actually a deva. A deva is an earth angel, a master deva. And there's a whole hierarchy of being, I will do a different class connected to all of these things, maybe the, um, the, the following week, but there is a whole hierarchy of beings uh, um, uh, and the master deva, Elohims and the master devas that, that would control that system. And it's highly hierarchical and the way to understand this is to think of God as the client, the Elohim and the archangels, or the architects and the engineers, they create blueprint. They create drawings with intricate detail on how to create everything. Where the plumbing goes, where the outlet goes, where the light goes, where the, how the structure stands, what kind of strength for the beam, what kind of strength for the pillars. They create everything, okay? But they take the client's wish, they take God's wish, and they, they create the structure, the divine structure, upon which the wish and the desire can be created. Then beyond that point, the archangels come in, and they are the um, general contractors that basically have a general understanding on how to put the package together and to bring the resources to create this building. 
then the angels or the several the different trades and uh, contractors one would be and they're all specialized so one would be an electrician for example there's an angel of mercy there was an angel of um uh, of death there was an angel of love there was an so th there's different category so uh, uh, some of them are demolitions some of them are carpenters some of them are plumbers and electricians and all of them will now have to work together. And then you, and then finally, at a different level, you end up having what are called the elemental um, angels, the devas, which are basically the daily workers that all of these subcontractors hire to create the will of God and have it manifest. Even in the case of all the changes you're seeing out around the world, whether it's an earthquake, whether it's a storm, whether it's a, it's a um, uh, 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 fire, it's all being orchestrated in a hierarchical manner. And uh, um, if you are attempting to connect with any of these forces, the attempt is never about you in your hubris thinking and your ego that you can control it. You don't know better than God. God knowledge and God's wisdom is infinite. You're seeing only a fraction of a larger picture that you cannot comprehend. That may be uncomfortable to you at a moment. But uh, Ultimately, there is a reconstruction after the demolition that, that will take place to bring something better behind it. So the best way that I can describe this to you is that one of my students this morning was making an analogy by saying that there was a, a, some leaks, plumbing leaks that, that she had in her house and she had to go to a lot of discomfort because as the plumbers came in, they had to rip the, out her whole entire bathroom and the subfloor and the structures. There was mold. There were all the things that were rotted. And all of that had to be replaced. But in the end, she realized the benefit because now everything is rebuilt. Everything is recreated after all the inconvenience and the weeks and the months of inconvenience. While this, all of this work gets done, now everything is recreated functioning smoothly. So there are times in the universe, it's, it's ebb and flow, it's peaks and valleys. There are times when things are going down and there needs to be a descent and a deconstruction of things. And at that moment, there might be things that may be taken away and that may feel like a loss to you or a major inconvenience that can anger you and put you into fear. So we need to understand it from that perspective. When we connect to these forces, we're not asking them, when we do the group connection, we're not asking them to stop or commend them to tell them to stop what they are doing. All we are doing, all we are asking them is something very simple. We ask first for their, we become neutral to them. And so once we are in neutrality and we're not afraid of them, it could be a twister, a tornado that's coming, a hurricane, we become neutral to them, a fire, and then we ask them for, we beg them, beseech them. We humble ourselves and ask them if they would allow us to merge with them. Once we sense there is an agreement that the way it happens is that Everything is solid, solid, solid. And if there's an agreement, all of a sudden you feel like an exhale and there's a surrender. And when that surrender happens, you, you feel like you're going in, you're, you're, you're merging. You're already merging. And at that moment, when you merge with them, you now simply ask them, tell them, I know that you are, you're, you're under guidance by God and by higher powers to move this along for a purpose that I don't understand. But we're asking for your mercy. 
Is there any way that you can accomplish what you need to accomplish with the least possible damage to individuals and to um, uh, livelihood? Is that something that's possible? And then you, 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 you disconnect and you wait for an answer. It should be a dialogue. If you come here with deceit and you try, these are earth, the, the, the master devas or earth gods. They, they are, they're earth angels. You cannot lie to them. They will see right through your heart. And the reason I'm saying this is that if we understand that these big catastrophic events that may be attacking friends and family members that cause us to be in distress. If you and I could do a connection and to ask the master devas that are controlling these, these uh, events for a way for the landing of this event to happen in a smooth manner. And the reason for this is because the rest of humanity are not connected to their heart. They are not controlled enough. Therefore, the devas, the master devas do not see them and they will barrel with the natural transformative event without thinking that there is any human on the path. They will barrel right through it. And therefore the landing will be rough. So as a collective of 144,000, as a collective of, um, of, of, uh, of earth keepers and guardians, we are capable of doing prayers of intercessions. And in doing these prayers of intercession, we can begin to ask these forces, is it possible for them to do what they need to do while still protecting the individuals and the livelihoods that are on their path? And if the landing and then being soft you and I who have done the intercession as intercessors, we have done all service. We have asked for mercy. Giving everything that's going on in the planet, if more of us were doing this, actively doing this, a lot of the landing of these things, we end up being softer and softer and softer. I'm not saying that change and transformation will not come. But going back to the construction analogy, if the contractor doesn't know that you have artwork on the wall and they start demolishing the wall and then they destroy your painting or your sculpture that was on the shelf or your books, uh, your bookshelf and all your precious uh, uh, figurines get all destroyed, that's a rough landing. But if you are aware that they are coming and they are aware that of your stuff, you make them aware and you move the stuff out of the way. Because a lot of time when I make these connections, sometimes the forces of nature, it, and they vary, they have personalities. Sometimes they are male, sometimes they are female, and sometimes they are very um, skirt, and sometimes they are very chatty and very soft. And, and they will talk to you, they will tell you, uh, sometimes they give you vision of the future. They said, I, I, basically, I can't stop what I'm doing. I need to do what you need to get out of the way. Get out of the way. Evacuate, get out of the way. Other times they tell you, oh, don't worry about it. It's going to be a soft landing. I understand what you're saying. We will, we will do something else. So what I'm saying is that by asking for that mercy and that intercession, we can soften the landing of, in other words, the future, whatever future is coming, there is a one event, one branch, one line, and the line has multiple prongs and multiple possibilities. And which one lands depend on us and our guidance by prayer, by intention, and by love. And I'm asking you to find a way to enter into that place of prayer, intention, and love. So that you can begin not only to guide your own soul 
and create less of a uproar. And also it's proactive for you when you know, my God, I thought it was going to be worse, but uh, all, all the predictions, all of the pattern and forecasts are saying this, look at how, how soft this ended up being or how less tragic it ended up being, right? And if that happens, then you have a way to uh, gauge, to say to yourself, well, this was effective. I am encouraged now, going forward in the future, if another event like this happens, I can begin to ask the, the next master group of master leavers for intercession. So, Having said this, when these moments occur, it's important for us to keep in mind a couple of things. If you are sick, you have a fever, you have diarrhea, or you have some sort of element or, or a situation going on with you, this is not the time for you to go healing. You have to become neutral. If you're not yourself completely neutral, and also when you make the connection to think about the name of the hurricane or the location where the volcano is or the, the fire is, if you connect to it and you feel a sense of reticence or something that jumps your skin, you're not neutral. Don't push it. Don't go any further because if you're not neutral and you continue it, it's going to backfire on you. And it's going to be harmful for, for, for you to move forward. If when you make the connection and you think about it and you uh, I, 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 um, um, you think about it and, and at some point it shifts around, if you could start being not neutral and you keep doing the work and you end up being more neutral, at that moment when you start sensing that you're becoming more neutral, you lean into it, okay? And at that moment, you're ready to do the connection. So if you're working with a group, and at the moment they're doing the connection or the timing of, the, um, of this natural event, and you realize that um, um, uh, I'm not going to at this moment, don't take part in the, in, in the group connection. Don't take part in if you're not overall. I want to share with you an actual experience that happened years ago. Uh, years ago, my, um, the council, my event student, um, we used to do prayer requests on the website. And we took prayer requests and all kinds of people would send prayer requests. And there was a family that used to send us pictures and he, this man used to ask all kinds of things about his family and so on and so forth. And so one day he asked us and he sent a picture of his wife who was waiting for a visa. I think they were applying for a visa to England. Uh, and they are asking for you know and 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 for us to pray for a positive um, uh, 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 thing with the immigration officer and um, um, and whatever it is that they needed to do. I don't need to know the detail to do the healing. Generally, I, I'm you know. So, and I'm going to be perfectly frank with you because I want to explain the nuance of the process of becoming neutral. When I, I, be, I did the torsion field around myself, I became neutral as I, I thought I was. Then I, I looked at her picture. I put the picture down. I thought of her name and I tried to locate her in space around it. When I found her, she was not the woman in the picture. I saw a being that was the ugliest thing that I ever saw. I thought it was a demon. There were two things that were sticking out. It, it was extremely scary and jarring to the point that it triggered me into fear because I grew up Catholic. There were all things about boogeymen under my bed that used to come and make me scream when I was a kid because I, the fire and brimstone church kind of upbringing. And I, and I mean, it brought all of this back up. I, I got joy. I, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa I can't do this human. But because it triggered me, I did it a couple of times, trying to connect again the next day. I realized it triggered me again to the same thing. I'm like, okay. I am not neutral to this. I need to become neutral now to my Christian upbringing and the fire and brimstone that I was domesticated to believe in. 
That's what I need to do right now. I need to become neutral to this. And I did the whole open up to myself and I asked for forgiveness and I, 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 um, I, 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 I forgave the church for their, for their, for their, uh, uh, controlling ways and whatever it is that they thought they were doing. I asked for forgiveness. And once that began to unravel for me and begin to be softer, the next time I connected to her, because we would do this every week. And on a Sunday, when we return back together, we will compare notes. So I, I, um, On the third day, when I was when I became more neutral, I connected again. But this time, when I went in, I realized she was not a demon. She was an insectosoid. She had antenna. She was extremely ugly looking with big bug eyes. She she was she her soul was the soul of an insectosoid in a human body. That's what it was. And. When I made the connection to her, that didn't jar me because I'm, 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 I've done enough journeys into other uh, places in the universe to know that God created all kinds of being. Insectosoid, reptilian, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 beings that are more etheric and angelic Elohims, all kinds of different species, including spider species that are all sentient. So, including aquatics, including bird people. So there, there were all kinds. So therefore, I'm, it didn't jar me. And then I thought to myself, the request is real. She still need to get a visa. She still need to have a positive outcome for the meeting with this immigration officer. Just because she's an she has an insectoid soul, I don't need to be biased and judgmental against her because of this. Therefore, I am now doing the healing and, and I'm sending her to source and ask God to help her pass this immigration hurdle. And that was a huge lesson in neutrality for me because it triggered my own triggers and my own thing, thing myself. Now, the interesting thing that happened is that when I met with the council a few days later, <clears throat> when we came to her, I said, did any of you do the prayer? Everybody was like, no. I said, I know what you saw, I said. But, and I said to them, she's not a demon. You're all Christian. I know what you saw. She's an insectosoid. And we were all judging her on appearance, what she presented. Any questions, any comments that you may have so far? Also, Pia, yes, I was thinking that uh, your fear uh, assumed a different reading of her appearance, uh, the illusion that appeared to you out of your fear was not real. Yes. So far, so many ways we might also be misinterpreting uh, events, people, or things around us because of our um, programming, our expectations or, or fears, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Murky is going up fully, uh, I'm shot up here on a uh, retrograde next week. I can tell you during working with retrograde, my mind played a number on me and my electronics as well, okay? All kinds of problems. And when that happened, I have to stop making decisions because my mind starts racing. One thing, and then all of a sudden, it's like conspiracy theory to the max. It's like a single, it's like a snowball. And I'm believing, I'm creating an entire story. 
and it's not based in any evidence or any fact. It's just, I think my intuition and God is telling me this. Now, it turns out that a lot of time also you're being inflated by the archon to like a balloon pool, bring in the balloon, make it bigger, right? And, 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 and so we have to be very careful about that. And the trigger for me, and again, as I said, for that moment was, was the, the fire and brimstone of, of, of bringing of my channel. By the way, this is the only experience I ever had of meeting somebody who so, was so um, drastically. I've met other beings from other planets, students and friends of family, but something like this, that jaw me and made me shocked like this. I have never had an experience like this. I met other insectosaurs, other, but they were not as jarring as this. And and so, it, it it when you go to an experience like this, and I, I could have stopped from the fear and say, I'm not doing the healing. The rest of the council did exactly that. I could have stopped, but I thought to myself, this is an opportunity for me to learn something about myself. If I claim that I want ascendance and I want elevation, let me lean into this and see beyond it. What is it about her that scares me? Is she really a demon? And when I went in, I realized, no, she's, she's the, the demon thing is my own projection. She had two things that were sticking out and she was so hideous I, and dis, disproportionate to anything that, that resembled a human. It, it, it shocked me. And I thought, it's a demon. And, and it took, uh, as I said, three days when I finally got myself to the point of realizing that she's an insectosaurid. And, and as a matter of fact, she's lost on Earth. She doesn't know how to interact or to be because this is her first time in on the planet. And she's, um, she's, she's very lost. And, uh, and um, I felt sorry for her. And I asked for mercy. I don't know what happened with her immigration. I didn't do a follow-up on that, but, but the healing was done from my end. But you're right, Janice, we project onto, uh, onto these things, experiences that we're having all kinds of fears that are not actual. They are perceived, but they are not actual. It is our own uh, zerapine, our own uh, 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 shield, our own uh, 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 handcuff that are making us react in these ways. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, certainly we can evolve beyond that, we can emancipate. And I wanted to share that with you because a lot of the fears that you may be experiencing, it doesn't have to be about planetary stuff. It could be about things that are in your life and you're perceiving a fear, an eminent fear about that or the other and you're driving yourself crazy. You're giving yourself an ulcer. You're, or for that matter, you're, you're becoming depressed. And I'm, I have some of my clients uh, and, and, and friends who have become suicidal. Who, and I, I, I've shared that in other classes before where I had to intercede in less than a week for three friends. I, I had to come in. I'm not trained in any ways uh, how to do suicide prevention, but I have a heart. And I could feel in one instance I was uh, uh, reached out to, and the other two instances, I was like, something is wrong with my friends. Let me reach out to them and find what's going on. And in those two instances, I was able to find them in profound state of, of uh, uh, suicidal ideation. And I was able to reach out to them. And, and, and more importantly, when, you're, when someone is in that state, and this is what I'm saying about hope. I don't know anything about psychology enough to be able to tell you safely what's the right word, what do you say after this or the other. But I have a big heart. And I listened to them as they were telling me their depression and why they feel the way they did. I listen to them because that's my gift. I listen well. I listen extremely well. I listen to them. And I allow every word that they said to penetrate my soul 
so that I can empathize and understand the reason why they are depressed. And as I listened that deeply, I saw mirrors to experiences I already had where I was also triggered to be close to where they are, but not exactly. I understood many things and I waited for them to be complete, to, to basically empty themselves out and release everything. While I'm supporting it, I'm listening, yes. I'm so sorry to hear that. And, and every time, for example, when one of them was saying to me, no one cares for me, I'm alone. No one, no one in the planet cares for me. And I'm like, that's not true. Unprompted, I haven't heard from you for months. Unprompted, I just called you. I care for you, I care. What you're saying is not factually true. Yes, yes, you're correct. And, 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 you know, you, you know and, 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 and as this went along, there was a turnaround in the conversation. And, I, and I'm going to tell you the thing that I said to him that caused the turnaround. After the description about the loss and the sense that no one cares and all the pain that I suffered and the abuse of my childhood and all of the things that all, again, perceive. It's not that these things didn't happen and they were not bad enough, but right now they are being inflated and they are now big, really immense. And after a 30 minute conversation, uh, uh, basically the, the person, my friend, just talking to me, I waited for a moment when there was a break and I said, everything that you're describing, I have felt in recent time. There is not one emotion that you're saying that I didn't experience. I said, my coping mechanism and the way I handle the stress related to the feelings, and it, it had to do with the way the world is changing. I kept hearing over and over again. And this is the thing about a lot of youth and uh, millennial that are going around now when they said, I don't belong on earth anymore. I don't understand the world. I don't understand the planet. When somebody's saying that I don't belong on earth anymore, they are low level suicidal. Be aware of this if you hear this from somebody. You need to treat them with care. You need to watch them carefully. And 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 I heard this so, several times. And I said, I finally I said to him, I said, I've experienced all of this. I said, I, I'm happened to be in a very different position than most. I'm a counselor, I'm a spiritual counselor. My clients come with their problems and they tell me all these things. Not one thing that you're saying did I not hear for almost every client. I said, the way they cope with it is different. Your way of coping is unique, but I need you to understand this as the truth. You're not alone. And he broke down in tears because that was the key. He felt alone. And this came directly from my heart. And that provided him with a launch pad, a springboard for a whole healing process for him to get him out of this deep depression that he was in. So I'm, I'm very grateful that I was present for my friends, that I was able to pick it up. And, and I want you to understand that hope is always there. It may appear invisible, but the flame of hope is never extinguished because that's what hope is. It's a desire and intention that is transcendental to despair, to darkness, to fear, and it brings light. It brings healing.
I know, I know all of you have things in your life that you're struggling with. Many times people tell you, oh, how are you? A lot of times, family members and friends or like somebody commits suicide. My God, I was talking to them yesterday. I didn't, they were, seem to be okay. Just because someone says I am okay, but you need to listen between the lines. As I said, if you hear your friend keep saying all the time, over and over again, I don't belong here. I don't understand what's happening in the planet. I don't belong here. I want the aliens to come and pick me up. This is low level suicidal. This person is maybe having suicidal ideation. You need to pay attention and find a bridge to connect to them, to bring them back into the light, bring them back into hope. It's not rocket science. It's more heart expansion. It's empathy. It's care. It's kindness. It's being loving and merciful. And I don't mean by that, that you're going to take the burden of the person and take them on your shoulder and carry it and run after them and do everything for them. I never did that for my friends. I, I had conversation with them. I helped them. I gave them the information. And I walked away and I let them figure it out on their own. And they are very grateful for it because they have to walk the walk to step out of the darkness. I can only show you the door, but I cannot walk, lift you on my shoulder and walk you uh, through, through the light. That's your responsibility. So there is a... When you're doing healing, you have to be very careful. A lot of light workers, a lot of us, we do the healing the wrong way. We think the healing is about us running after the person, uh, uh, doing this and, and lifting them and carrying them and, and, and being after them. Did you do this? Did you, you give them the information. They're grown. They are not handicapped. They are not wheelchair bound. They are not paraplegic. They are capable of doing the thing. If they don't do it, now they're making a choice because you give them the information and you give them the means to reach the other side. And we are all ultimately making choices to select which future we're gonna exist in. You now are broadcasting to them the beacon of hope that they didn't have before. How, what they're gonna do with that beacon is up to them. I have to tell you, when I said to my friend, you're not alone, it wasn't just words. It came from my core and from my Otakwana. It was me reaching out from my core into his soul to put a light in there, to make him realize, because his biggest thing is that no one cares, no one, I'm alone, I, I'm, 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 everybody has been abusing me, blah, 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 I don't belong here, I need to die, I'm going to jump over the broken bridge, I'm going to, by me just saying, you're not alone, that was the key for him to realize he's not alone. Now that comes with social emotional intelligence and social intelligence. And that projection came directly from my core. My core went into him. I didn't need to do be gone time and space, no, made the peace the serenity that I know. The, what I was projecting in the moment. The intention, you're not alone. And I transferred it. He felt it immediately because immediately he started crying. And that beacon remained lit in him until now. Any questions and comments? Uh, yes, uh, Pierre, you've now spoken about 
are connecting with the devas to mitigate the dangers of uh, harm to humans in their path. You've talked about um, prayer for different ones that are needing uh, assistance for things to go well. And I'm wondering, is there a connection also in the world we live in uh, with a lot of political and economic and, and war and, and many uh, troubles, uh, is there a process similar to what you just described that we should consider doing? Okay, the social and political stuff, they are Maya and they're illusion. They are just like the world event that was swirling and moving toward us. And we don't understand what God is trying to do because God's will is mysterious to us. And, you know, if you think of our brain, think of God as infinity times infinity. How many cubic feet I have in my cranium, although I have a big head, but it's not big enough to be like God's head. Okay? So, so giving, giving that, a lot of time I don't understand what God's purpose is. So what I do, particularly when my friends are talking to me about rhetoric and they get very agitated, I have two friends and one of them is on one side, they're the political around the other one is on the other side. I love them both. And a lot of time I sit in the middle of them and they argue back and forth. And I sit there and I'm and and then when they finish arguing, blah, 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 and they're like, Pierre, what do you think? And I basically sit there and and I and it takes me sometimes 30 seconds to actually utter a word. Because what I'm really thinking right now is that. I just want both of you to quiet because it's all an illusion. And a lot of times I respond by just saying, do you really want to know what I really think? Or sometimes when I have a deeper insight, I would say, I remember saying to a friend, my, my friend very recently, um, how far down the rabbit hole do you want me to go? Do you want me to really go, go deep or do you want a surface answer? Because, you know, some of that political and social stuff, I'm going to act, uh, I'm, I'm in, I'm, you know, I have my civic duty and I'm going to act and, I'm, and I want me to share with the rest of the world and, and stand in a soapbox and try to platform out to mass media and tell everyone what I'm doing. It's not my purpose. A lot of it has to do with your purpose. What purpose are you here for? And what are you trying to accomplish? Mm. Because all, all of these other things are nothing more than distraction that will take you away from your purpose. People are dying and killing each other over things that are not consequential to their own purpose and their own dogma. Mm. So when I hear them arguing like this, and I'm like, I, and I know I know them because they're my friend. I know what really is going on. That one is a medical condition. That one is worried about, you know, our finances. This one is worried about that, I, you know, family. Why are you wasting your time with all of this stuff and getting excited and talking a mile a minute, a mile a minute and getting agitated and jumping all around? And, and when they're going like this I, and they're asking me, what do you think? And I'm like, you're moving too fast. You're jumping from place to place. You need to take a breath. You need to calm down. I don't mean it in a, in a, um, in a demeaning manner, but I stay very quiet and I don't say a lot. And then when there was an opportunity that they want to know what I need I to say, I said, you need to calm down. You need to back away. It seems that you're triggered by this. And whatever the trigger is, it might be something deeper for you. It's okay. In the end, God is going to make sure that we're taken care of. That's the bottom line. My yeah. purpose is not for me to become political and, and to go out there and run for public office and try to change the world from that end. That's not what I'm here for. I know what my purpose is, and I'm going to do it. It's about a broadcast, a radiation. And I'm going to broadcast. Yes. 
and, and I was thinking about the intercession with the devas of the typhoons and the hurricanes. Is there a connection that we could make for global conditions, economic or political or otherwise, uh, aside from knowing that God has a plan? Is there some intercession that we should not not to be on the front lines picketing kind of thing, but um, in asking for mercy and... Well, a lot of these things are coming because of certain kind of astrological alignment. I'm not an, ast um, uh, an astronomer, um, uh, an uh, um, astrologist, so I, I don't know too much, but I, I do know enough that Saturn is too close to the planet until December 2025. And therefore, it's kicking up a whole bunch of stuff. And because there's a there's a there's three planets, three they, they are oppositions. They are planets that are going to align with each other, and three of them will happen at the same time. I forget what they are, but it's a very rare configuration that's going to happen very shortly. And because of this, it begin it will create all kinds of opportunity. And some since Saturn will really test you to if you are not um, uh, prepared for it, it really tests you that it will kick up for you all of the related events that you haven't mastered yet. Because if you if you master it, Saturn will not bother you. It's when you have stuck energy that Saturn becomes a nemesis. So um, there is that planetarily. Saturn is way too close at this moment. And so we, that's the, the a bigger answer, a planetary answer. But on the other hand, as far as I know right now, I can only go after as a, as a council, as a group, after events as the events are occurring. Because I don't know what the transformation that God is creating. Oh, okay, it's the best way to, to, to describe this. So you have the you have a, you have the future, and you have these multiple prongs that explains out from it, branch out the alternate future, parallel realities, parallel futures. Which future we land on depends on the collective consciousness that we create at any moment. And which event manifests depends on the collective consciousness that we hold at the moment. So these events, although a lot of channel, including me, can predict and tell you there's a potential for this or this natural disaster, blah, blah, blah. How it manifests and when it manifests depend where the collective consciousness is is for whatever reason, the collective consciousness elevate, but that event doesn't need to happen, it will, that future will fall off. So it's very hard to know, even when you see the future, which one is a dead dawn future. And I will, and I will give you a caveat for this because I know how my perception of the future works for me as a seer. If I see it in meditation, it's gonna happen. If I see it in meditation, it's gonna happen. Sometime in the future and there's all kinds of potential that could happen. There's a whole range of possibilities. But if I see it, in my dreams, it's days and weeks away. This is the way it works for me. So if I see a global or planetary event and it shows up in my dreams, I know this is imminent and, and, and it, there's a barrel and it's moving forward. And having said this, you can always pray for mercy for the planet 
There are groups around the world that are praying for mercy, praying for mercy all the time. My friend Georgia has a group that chants nonstop asking for mercy for the planet, for all kinds of things, for healing, for uh, planetary change, for social and political stuff, for everything. Okay? So if you have people who are dedicated to that pattern that feels it's their way of service, then great. But most people do not see it in that manner. You have to what find uh, individual of like mind that desire to do the same thing. I, the council and I can, we can intercede when we're beginning to see the manifestation of a catastrophic future that's coming. And we can begin to intercede by merging with the Davis. Mm -hmm. I hope I've answered your question. I think I was too general, maybe. Well, no, I think uh, I think it has to be kind of general the way you were describing it because the evolution is um, so there's so many different directions that things can go in, and the plan of God is so unknown to us what what is the best outcome, even if it's destruction, because out of destru destruction, uh, Plutonian kind of uh, you know, destroy what isn't working so you can rebuild and make it better uh, is in, in fact um, an important part of that equation. Totally, totally. I want to describe for the remainder of the class something that's quite transcendental and abstract. And it is my great hope that I will do a good job in describing it. And I want to project that as a beacon for you to hold so that you can take it with you in whatever struggle that you're going through at the moment. I have spoken multiple times in multiple videos and training about the white space. I have described often, uh, and I've said to you, I've described to you that when, you, when you're neutral and deeply neutral in all parts of your body, in all part of yourself, and you go so deeply neutral, you get to a point where you experience uh, and, and it only happens when you have surrendered your fear, attachment, and control to everything. And I mean by that, even fear and attachment to your own identity, to, to your job, to your family, to your church, your faith, to what you think is your dharma, and as you keep surrendering and surrendering all these things, you're going to get to a point where all that will remain is basically your, the positive aspect of your ego. The sense of the id that makes you understand that I am different from anyone else. And everything else will be so surrendered and so completely let go into the blessed feeling, the benevolence that's all around you, that you're going to get to a point where you will realize, and it's a special awareness. A lot of time when people enter it, when I do meditation and prayer, they keep thinking to themselves, oh my God. I blanked out. I don't know where I went. You were talking. I could hear your voice in the background. All of a sudden, I blanked out. I was somewhere else, but I feel very rested, and I, I, I don't know where I went. You actually went into a transcendental fourth and fifth dimensional space where 3D orientation of time and space doesn't exist anymore. You went to a place where the coordinate of 
3D space, X, Y, and Z axis are gone. And therefore, your five sensory perceptions of 3D space, since they all blown out, are so knocked out that you think you became unconscious. In fact, your body probably put you on, um, make you unaware of nothing because you couldn't find a way to process the new volume that you were in, the new space you were in. And what happens is that if you keep going back to that awareness, there comes a moment where you have a very specific experience of you, sometimes you have a body, sometimes you don't even have a body. You're like a, a, a ghost or drone in a gigantic, immense white volume. It feels infinite. It doesn't have beginning or end. And everything in there, the, the original, uh, the, 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 the primary uh, uh, experience initially when you enter it is rest. You feel utter and complete rest. Like you have, you're completely unburdened. No wrinkles, no, no worry, everything's removed, everything's at rest. And as you do this, what's gonna happen is that you are gonna get to a point where eventually you will realize that other sensation or other higher feelings and emotion are in there too. And some of it is not describable by anything that exists in the English language. That's why I'm taking, it takes me so long to try to explain it. There are moments where the, it feels like waves are crashing into you, but waves of benevolence and kindness. Wherever your, your sense of self is, there is this wash of all these waves of all kinds of multiple things that seems to be washing all over you. And everything is there feel like a cas endless cascade and pulsation of vibratory healing and goodness. Everything in there is about healing and goodness. And as you continue to experience this, you may begin over time to realize as well that it's not just rest that you feel. You have no thoughts because you're unburdened. So the monkey mind disappears. Or you may end up also feeling that at the moment that you don't have uh, What's the word? There's such stillness. You know, in the Bible, there's a passage that says, be still and know that I am God. That's what they were talking about. It's complete stillness. And the reason I'm saying this is because that state of being is not an exotic state. 
It's not something that you cannot reach. It's everywhere and in all of us all the time. We are so trapped by our own five senses and our own this undeservedness and desire to control everything, to do this and follow this, follow the tail and follow. I was sharing with somebody earlier, all of the things that we think we should do. I should do this, I should. It, it's Charlie Brown, blah, 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 blah. Well, all you need to do is to go into that state of awareness and surrender whatever burden you have into the best way I can describe this is that there is an infinite presence. I don't know what that presence is per se. You can call it whatever you want, source, whatever it is that you want to call it, you can qualify it. It doesn't matter because they, it's called many things. What I can tell you is that when I'm blessed to be in that presence, if I bring a prayer intention in front of that presence. And I'm neutral to the person I'm praying to and I bring it in. The prayer is instantaneously responded to. Not tomorrow, not the day after, instantaneously. And when I say this, I have to put a qualification because a lot of time people don't understand that you may energetically feel the change and the transformation, but the confirmation in 3D may take you two days or three days or a week to verify and actualize that what you feel is correct. It may take an hour until somebody knocks on your door and the very thing that you were worried about the solution set is presented right in front of you. I've had some extraordinary experiences that connects to this. And at this point, more than ever, I want to give you hope and make you understand that it's not an exotic state that only the few privileged can have. You all have access to it. Everyone in the entire universe has access to it because it's the very fabric that the entire universe is created from. And I know that energy signature extremely well. The other moment I enter the blessed field where I am still slight, I, I, I pass the threshold, I get in there, but I'm still burdened, I'm still worried about something. I don't get to that same level. Like, for example, sometimes I bring somebody in a healing, I'm able to take them into the blessed field because I've done it multiple times. I can get them there, I bring them there, but I am not completely neutral to them. I have a little bit of bias, a little bit of judgment, I, I'm, 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 in my mind, I'm like, what they're asking is too big. I, I don't know if God can do it. The moment you begin to do this, you're interfering with the clearing, with, with, the, with the healing. You're automatically interfering. There's nothing in that blessed field, in that white space, that God or the, that the presence cannot do. Nothing. After all, it's endless possibility that exists in that field and it's infinity times infinity. So when I am connected to this, 
And I happen to remember, sometimes I have to remind myself even because I'm a human being too. The moment I'm, I'm caught in the glue trap of, of the illusion and the mayas of the world. And I'm worried, I'm concerned about this. And my, as I said to you, Mercury retrograde, my mind was making loops upon loops upon, and I knew well enough, I'm like, I'm not making a decision. I'm not, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm, trying, I'm not doing any of that stuff because it's, it's going to get worse. Because if I do this now, it's going to make it worse. And so I allow everything to happen slowly. And then when I am in that state of bliss where this unburdened pure white light in my perception, this ease and this incredible flow envelopes me. The presence, the Father and I are one. What I can say additionally to you is this. I remember one experience I had with the, uh, I'll share it with you, a small story. I had felt disconnected to my God and I felt I was abandoned because I was struggling to too many things and I was worried and I was trying to do all kinds of things to fix this and fix that. And I, I was doing and doing, I kept on trying to fix it. And the more I fix, the more complicated, the worse it gets, the more I fix them. And, and I finally went into prayer and, I, and, I, and I, I remember begging God and saying, you have abandoned me. I've tried so hard to do this and to fix that. I have, I have beseeched you. I, 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 but I was doing it the wrong way because I was trying to do it. You see, I remember telling you that ascension is the thin line that exists between doing and surrendering. I was doing, 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 doing. I was not surrendering. So I, I said, well, you, you have abandoned me. And I felt I have to I have to be very careful because this brings you to tears every time I remember, I remember it. I felt on this left shoulder, a right hand squeeze. I could feel it squeeze my shoulder, and a voice in my head said extremely loud, "I have never left you." Oh. 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 I wish that every one of you could experience this. And I know that you can. I know that you can. Pierre, isn't it like your friend t telling your friend you are not alone? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And whatever was the problem for me, the next day somebody came on my driveway. And the solution set that I needed is presented right in, in somebody came in my house and offered and gave it to me as a gift.
Yes, that fine line between uh, action and surrender is not always an easy one for those of us that like to be in control. <laughs> and we all do. This is this is the problem that we have. Everyone in the we all do. We are trying to control everything because this is what survival kicks in. You control for you to to survive, but to have. In other words, I'm asking you to elevate the cultivation of your relationship with this presence. Because your healing is in there. Giving everything else that's happening in the world, that's where the healing is. That's where safety is. That's where the future earth is. Any other questions or comments? All right, let's take a five minute break and then we'll do the closing meditation.
Take a very deep and slow breath. And as you inhale and exhale deeply and slowly, Allow the universal life force that permeates everything to enter into your lungs. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. And let your soul and your awareness drop you in the middle of your chest. Please forgive me. I love you, and I let go, please forgive me, I love you, and I let go. Let your mind and your heart sync with each other. And notice what you noticed. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. And listen to whatever information and knowing that your heart wants to share with you.
allow any insights, expansion, knowing, concerns, or information. that this part of your body want to share with you to come forth. I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness. And endless luminosity. release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity.
in the blessed field. With infinity times infinity, and the presence in that vast continent. Embrace me. May the rest The stillness the hope.
and the repair that I need. Instantaneously, effortlessly, and miraculously. Be installed in me and in all aspects of my life. There is nothing under the sun that this infinite presence cannot remove instantaneously.
Osana into the highest. Osana into the highest. Osana into the highest. Take a very deep and slow breath. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you, Pierre, that oh, the class and that meditation were just what I needed and I felt a quickening, I guess you would call it, throughout waves and waves through that meditation in that wonderful, beautiful white space. You're welcome, Janice. <laughs> uh, I want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, Subscribe to the channel. Um, um, follow us um, if you're on um, our supporter on Patreon. Thank you for your support. And I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Bye.